Hey guys, this is Instructor Joe. So I know it's been a little bit since I did a video. Lots of changes, like a lot of changes. Uh, I got a new place, so now I have a little bit more room to do stuff. Some upcoming stuff uh, with my assistant that you'll see a video soon with, hopefully. Um, yeah, and I got a new haircut, so might as well do a new video, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, today I'm gonna go over uh, some types of reloads and everything and when they're applicable and um, Yeah, so let's just get started. I am Going to use my Glock 17. Yeah, I got, I got a little bit shorter on my carry gun just because uh, The extra inch gives me a little bit more bendability when I do it so, empty gun empty magazine another empty magazine so a lot of people see the emergency reload, what they call emergency reload. Basically, when you shoot, the gun, the magazine's empty, you're going to get a fresh magazine and re uh, release the old one and then insert the other one. Now I'm going to be going over some specific terms. So, index. What index means? So, my version of index. I have a small hands. Sometimes the magazines are big, right? So, what I when I index, I just point to where the round would be uh, some people um, like to like go all over like go further up and touch the bullet and everything or the tip of the bullet to make sure the magazines loaded and everything so my theory on that like if you know your stuff is loaded especially you can seal carry and all that stuff especially if you're going out on your kit uh, with your kit and everything you're gonna load everything you don't need to index the magazine especially if you have a bigger magazine or something like that or if you have small hands like i do uh, index pointing towards the bullet itself you can touch it if you want to but i'll explain why i don't go all the way forward later on too so indexing your magazine pointing towards the bullet itself uh now when you are reloading you want to it's kind of hard to see on this one but when you're reloading you want to put the gun into your workspace is what they call it basically you kind of want to see what you're doing it could be down here it could be up here just preference and everything and all the situation the dependent um in a tactical situation i just well any in any situation personally i like to keep my gun up t up kind of high so i can see what's going on and inserting, indexing my magazine, inserting into the magazine. Now, if you see what I'm doing, I'm not going here. I'm usually pointing the gun in a safe direction, finger away from the trigger when I'm doing it. And also, if I'm releasing the magazine, I uh, am rolling my index finger away from the magazine to push in that magazine release. Now, I'm right-handed, left-handers, or if you have an ambidextrous, magazine release you can do the other side and everything i just like to have my finger away from the trigger so if i'm doing that my index finger is away from the trigger and uh pushing in that magazine release letting that drop or if, the, if i have to rip it out rip it out and then i'm put, ha still having the gun pointing in safe direction especially when you're doing competition you always want the gun pointing in safe direction a lot of people if they're doing like some other training uh <laughs> from a different company that involves this piece right here. <laughs> um, I've never been through their courses, but there, there's a lot of stuff, there's lots of stuff that they do. Um, they're, they're used to having the workspace tilting the gun like that way. But say if you're in a t uh, in like a environment where there's people there, people there, there's, there's something that you might not want it to point at over there. So I like to keep it towards where I'm focused, uh, where my area is and then indexing it in. Now, a little tip when you are reloading, when you're reloading, where to look. Some people say you wanna keep your eyes on the target, use your peripherals, but when you're first getting into it, easiest thing to do is try to look inside the mag well, like right here. Um, some people will have like a fluorescent tape or something, something really fluorescent so they can stick it like right here to look into it so they can have a reference point to where to look. But when you're reloading in your workspace, looking into there, indexing it, pointing the, the your index finger pointing towards the gun itself and then just inserting like so. So again, Pointing safe direction, finger away from the trigger. I, re I would release my magazine. So with this uh, point of view section, 
really I'd roll my finger away from the trigger finger, release the magazine, and then inserting, uh, looking inside right here, inserting my magazine in, and inserting like that. So, finger away. From your perspective, insert there. That's that. See, so always pointing where my uh, where my target is, where, my, where the thread is, or anything. Um, do it from this section right here. So I'll do it now with releasing a magazine. So you'll see on some of my slow motion videos um, when I release my magazine, I, I fiddle around with my fingers. You'll you'll see it soon. But when I release it, insert it, and then I and I get back on it. So going back to uh, more into the emergency reload when. You are doing an emergency reload. The gun will be empty, or the magazine will be empty, so the slide will be locked to the rear. So now what you would do is your finger away from the trigger, release the magazine, insert that, that new magazine into it. Now, how to release the slide. So in my army training, when I, when I insert the magazine, I go overhand, pull back, and let go on the slide. I hit my hit my shoulder when I do it. So again, inserting it, pull back, let go, hit it, hit it my shoulder, and then deploy my gun out. Um, few reasons for that. It ties into a malfunctions drill. So most common malfunctions drill would be like a stove pipe or something like that, which you'll have a round exceeding here. Let me just show you. All right, types of malfunctions. I'll get into to another video about this later on, but uh, I want just to explain the overhand drill. So, <clears throat> so stovepipe malfunction. Stovepipe means that you might have a round shell, what have you, fail to extract, fail to feed, um, something like that. It will look like that maybe off to the side or something. So when I rack overhand, um, <coughs> sorry, and when I rack overhand, when I'm racking it, it's clearing that jam, and then I can, and then it'll load the next round in it. So say if I, if I'm shooting, 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 I get, I get that. Um, my, my automatic uh, reaction would be to tap, rack, and squeeze. So by racking it overhand, when I do, uh, when I load my magazine from a, for an emergency reload, then I might be able to clear that malfunction. It's just muscle memory. Um, yeah, it's just a habit to develop. You'll develop your own habits. Uh, it's just on how you train. Overhand racking, side racking, or using the mag catch, uh, not mag using catch, slide catch to release the slide. Right. So that's how I overhand when, when I'm in that emergency reload. So Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. It just all depends on the situation or how I'm training. Oh. So again, emergency reload, squeeze, squeeze, and then, well, you're gonna shoot, shoot, the magazine's empty, drop your magazine, reload your next one, overhand, rack. Just like that. Now, going to go on to a little bit, a little rant about the slide catch. So, on most guns, slide catches, they're meant to catch the slide. Not necessarily to release the slide, but to catch the slide. <laughs> now, um, a lot of people too, sometimes they have small small hands, it's not, or something like that. To get to the slide catch, to release the slide, um, you, it's the same thing as releasing a magazine. Rolling your finger away from the trigger, that tend to get it sometimes. Um, especially on stuff like CZs or something, uh, yeah, just might get to it. Now, on some other models like SIGs or something like that, it's made for the back. Now, a little more into it, it is unhealthy to release the slide when you don't have a magazine into it or even if you have an empty magazine into it. It's just over time, if you do it like thousands and thousands of times, the, the, it'll just wear out on you. 
and everything. A lot of people do it. Eh, there's, yeah, uh, it's not made to do it. It's a lot more easier if you do have like a loaded magazine or something into it. It relieves the pressure off of the slide lock so it's easier to, to push down on it. Most people, after checking out new guns and everything, or rental guns or something, they think they know everything, so try to release the slide like so. Not so much sometimes, especially on a new gun. Uh, yeah, the easiest thing to do, just like clearing the gun, release the, oh, if it's locked to the rear, is release the magazine, just pull back, let go. An extra hammer to it, properly seats around into the chamber, instead of uh, releasing the slide. Now, sometimes, too, if you release the slide, it won't go into a, a full battery. You never want to fire a gun if it's not into a full battery, like so. So, that's my little rant about that. Now, when people utilize the slide lock to, to release the slide, it's all about technique. It's all about timing. Uh, the timing is releasing the magazine, getting seating in the magazine, then pushing down onto it. So you can think about that in a synchronized way. So you release, slam, and then release. Or after you release the slide, put some pressure on that slide lock itself. So when you're slamming in the magazine, that forward motion will push up on that side release, and then you can get into it. So, so the slower version. So, squeeze, empty, release, like so. Is that it? Now, as I said, it's all about practice. Uh, just going through the motions, getting to it. Empty magazine, release, into it like so. Cool. It's just um, how you practice and just, just muscle memory. The slower you go at it, at, at it repetition wise, stiff for like like five minutes or so or like ten times then you can go at it faster then faster to faster then if it ever happens to you um, you can choose one of t do one of two ways either use a slide lock or pull back and let go All right. now that is the emergency reload Now I'm gonna get into the tactical reload. So there's a couple ways to do this. So let me explain what the tactical reload is. So basically, you're firing, firing, firing. It's not locked to the rear. You still have rounds inside of that magazine. So, so what you wanna do is refresh and get a new magazine to put inside the gun. I'm gonna show you two techniques. The first one I learned in the army. It's a little bit easy for me and also another reason why it index high up on the magazine. So it's, I call this the L pattern. So what you're gonna do, indexing the magazine, you have that little space right here. With that space, you're gonna cup the magazine right here, release another magazine, so it's an L, then insert the fresh magazine inside of it. With the other magazine, you can put it in a pocket, dump pouch, or inside your pouch that you grab that magazine in and then you have a new magazine into it. You can develop a drill pattern just by L, so you, it's like so, like that. Just going back and forth, going onto it. Just so you can get used to it. This, uh, this technique works really good with longer guns <laughs> as well, uh, especially like uh, AR-15s and all that stuff. Now the second way to do a tactical reload is what I call the V pattern. Uh, you can do, call it cigar hold, many names for the same thing. So instead of having an L indexing like this, you're gonna put the magazine in between your index and middle finger, like a cigar. But the reason why I call it the V hold is instead of putting the neck of the magazine in an empty space, you're gonna catch it with your index and thumb. So what it'll do, you release the magazine and catch it like so. So you have a V. Then you're gonna insert the 
fresh magazine and do it like so and like that so with this pattern too it gives you a little bit more room to kind of push that magazine into the magwell and again you can develop a drill like this just to be pattern so switch it over so like so and just just have fun with it see which one works out for you it, it varies for me um, depending on what I'm doing sometimes if you if you caught that <laughs> I kind of combined it and, and yeah it's just about what's comfortable for you yeah in competitive shooting you're not going to you're not going to want to go to a side lock you're just going to round count see uh, um, plan your stage two shots two shots two shots two shots then you know you're going to reload to get into it you're not really going to want to go to a side lock and also if you don't want to drop your magazines a little tip if you're ever doing this standing up have something to catch the magazines with as you notice, I'm not bending all the way down to get the magazines. It's actually going into my, my little, little hamper right here. <laughs> so I don't have to bend down all the way to get it. Cool. Those are some tips for those drills. So there are many ways you can uh, implement these reloading techniques. It all depends on your situation. I like to train different types of training like every, uh, like for 20 minutes, every day or every other day. So right now I'm gonna train with my conceal uh, draw and technique and everything. Just both of those techniques, emergency reload, um, tactical reload. Usually in emergency reload, uh, sometimes I don't have all, I don't have like a full magazine, who knows why. Uh, and then I need to get to my fresh one. So as for simulation purposes i'm going to go into a minor malfunction drill but it's going to lock to the back and then i'm going to do my emergency reload cool. yeah so i chambered i did the overhand technique just for a malfunctions drill um reaction that's my default reaction if anything goes wrong I'll go over that in a later video, but I'm going to do that again. Empty magazine. Oh. Alright. Now, I'm going to do an emergency reload with a, with a faster, quick reload. So basically, instead of going overhand, I am just going to use the pressure on the slide lock uh, and reload it. XL. Cool. Yeah. Fumbled a little bit, but I'll show you again. Now it just, it takes a little bit of practice getting used to that uh, fast reload and everything because I got that round in there somewhere. I lost that now. <laughs> uh, it just takes a little bit of practice getting into it. As, as I said, some people aren't as coordinated. No offense, <laughs> but the trick is to just slam and then, put, and then push down. Slam, push down, and then you get into it. Takes training. As I said, I try to do this at least three times a week, 20 minutes a day, um, yeah, or do videos on it. Now, what I'm gonna do is the, um, the tactical reload. So I have dummy rounds in here. I have a chamber. So I'm gonna shoot now when to implement like a tactical reload. Like if you have time, um, you'll hear the, you'll hear stuff if, for tactical stuff. You either want to be moving or reloading, something like that. You want to be moving or reloading. So let's say if I'm in a threat situation, uh, high threat situation, I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. 
the, the guy's kind of down. I'm assi- uh, assessing the situation, yeah, but I want a new magazine in it, just in case one of his buddies comes up or anything. So, fresh magazine, put that in, put that back here, and assess the situation. Again. Again, threat situation. Shooting, shooting, shooting. People are kind of down. I'm assessing the situation. I want to be moving. I want to be reloading. See so that? And then, yeah, like so. So just in case, yeah, you never know if a threat has friends or anything. Uh, yeah, do that one more time. So for competitive shooters, you're not going to uh, necessarily use an emergency reload unless you lose count and everything. Uh, So I'll demonstrate that. Dummy rounds. My competitive rig. So when I'm competitive shooting, I'm usually shooting, 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 transition, moving to my next target, then I'm going to reload. But I'm just going to let that drop. I'm not going to do that sort of tactical reload where I catch it because it's easier to just... Let the, let the magazine drop, reload like so. I just saw muscle memory getting into it. I don't have to really, that, that's why too, I have my gun up high, so I can just reload it. I don't have to look at it to get to it and just all training. I can do this all day long, provided I get my magazines back. Shooting, shooting. Now, if you don't wanna recover your magazines all the time, it's a little technique I do. I just have an empty magazine or empty gun Really? And then just use the magazine off of that. So I'm just shooting, shooting, shooting. Pretend I'm releasing the magazine, but not really releasing the magazine, just do them like so. But you always want to get used to that muscle memory of releasing that magazine. So, yeah, do it one more time. Shooting, shooting, shooting. And getting into it like so. That's all just practice, practice, practice onto it. Some people have bigger sticks that you really need to get to, to, it's a little bit different, especially for competitive shooting, because you need to grab it differently, and then you need to insert it differently. Just start off slow until you get used to it. Yep, otherwise that'll happen. <laughs> uh, also, like some magazine magwells can help out with that situation going into there. I took the mag wall off of this one temporarily. I'm still debating on uh, what to do with my competition guns. Right. <laughs> I'll get back to that. And also, a little drill that I like to do, I have, usually have two magazines. Uh, I don't have one in there so I can transition. So this one will be both hands, reload, one hand, reload, weak hand. So, yep, just takes practice, practice, practice. Notice, I'm not doing any live fire. I don't need to practice this when I'm live firing. You can practice this with dummy rounds. It's all muscle memory. Shootings, muscle memory, consistency. It's getting on it, getting on it, getting on it. Uh, same with holster draw, which I'll go over in a later video. You're not gonna get better just going to waiting for a range day to come by and then spending 2,000 rounds just shooting, 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 and like trying to do your drills and everything. But most rangers you can't. I do this stuff three times a week, 20 minutes per session. Uh, yeah. So uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, let me know if you would like to learn more about any techniques and stuff. This is Instructor Joe, and happy shooting.